Oh, I think we're going. I think we're going. I we're, think we're going. We're muted though. But are can we someone muted? type in the chat if you can hear us right now? If and then that would, here, that would just, just confirm it for us. And in the meantime, yeah, someone commit and then we'll then we'll get started. Drop a comment if you can hear us right now. And uh Yeah. I think I think we're good. All right. I think we're good. Up? All yeah. right, beautiful. What's up? My name is Will. And I'm Sarah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ryan. I'm Ryan. That's Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> we practiced three times, Ryan. And we are going live today to answer all of your questions uh, that you may have or not have uh, about sales and other stuff if you want to ask us that too. It's an ask me anything. They That's can ask right. Us anything. We're here in California, West Coast, all three of us from the East Coast. We're all jet lagged as heck. Um, but that means we're kind of manic energy right now, which is kind of a good vibe in a way. Yeah, it's a great vibe. My great vibe life. until we all crash. That's Let's it. not crash on this. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. So as you come in, I'd love to hear your questions. Why don't Sarah, I'd like to start by asking you a question. Ask me a question. What's the worst call you've ever had? Worst call I've ever had? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I don't know if it's the worst call I ever had, but a very recent, not so great call. Yeah. Uh, I got on the the woman just was totally checked out and was, you know, doing whatever. I'd say a really a, a not so great call I had. I was finishing up a demo and having a conversation with a prospect, and my dog walked up to me and then vomited in the background. And you oh, can hear, him, yeah, 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 and yeah. you can hear him just like gagging. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's happening. That's really happening. What are our next steps you, <laughs> to get off this call and to clean up some vomit? That's too good. Did he, did he close it? That's the real. Yeah, that's, that's what people really want to know. Um, I think the deal is still in flight. The deal is still in flight. <laughs> Three years later, <laughs> Three hasn't <years> closed. Later. <laughs> <laughs> the um, I, I'd say that's an icebreaker. It gets if you can break the fourth wall, you can sometimes get someone laughing. Brian, what about you? What was the worst call you ever had? Um. Are we talking like cold call that I made or are we talking oh. discovery call that I made? Meeting or cold call. Okay. The worst dis discovery call I've ever had was right after like the pandemic started. And uh, it was a startup like ABA practice. I was selling into the, the medical tech space. Guy gets on the, the video. We're having a great conversation. He's eating a bowl of cereal. He stands up real quick nothing underneath just he stopped. says it, 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 uh, boxers but it was okay. it was <laughs> everything was on the screen calvin klein's and he like... like adjusted it they were tidy whities <laughs> like no and he adjusted the computer just enough so it was in the screen the whole time and you saw on the gong recording the whole time <laughs> <laughs> this is, the whole time that I, plug? that's when the call just went sideways mm. i could not focus I started laughing. I, could, I was just like, uh, yeah, it just threw me off my game entirely. Did you say like, sir? I didn't. I was so afraid for my job at the time because I was more junior into my A position that I just let this dude just sit there in his tidy whities on the call, eating a bowl of cereal while I tried to sell him a, a platform. Did I didn't buy? close the deal. Okay, no, yeah. All right. Now, That's fair enough. Mm. We do have a I question. Think did it on purpose, though, though. For our first question that I didn't ask from Ron. What's your favorite discovery question? You go. You want me to go? Yeah, you go. Um, I, 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 if I had to pick one. It's hard. You, it's, it, that's a really hard one because you need yeah. more than one question. But I would say my favorite question to start with is typically, especially for an inbound lead, what's not going as well as you'd like with blank thing that I, you know, help solve? Because generally that gets them pointed on what's not going well. And my thing, I find if you start too broad with that first question, mm -hmm. you end up talking about 10 different things that just don't mean anything to you. So that's probably the question I, I start with. So I'll say that's my favorite, I guess, but uh, there's definitely some better questions. What about yourself, yeah. Sarah? Um, generally, I think a lot of discovery is just reframing the mm -hmm. question, why? Why? Oh, really? Why? And so that's like, that's like the root of my discovery is trying to dig into the why. Why does that matter? Why is this important? Why now? And I think any question that starts with why yeah. uh, is a great one. The other one that I particularly love when you're in a situation like the one you just described is ask them to stack rank the priorities. Hmm. Hey, you told me X, Y, and Z are going on. They tie back to all these different things. If you just stack rank them in order of importance, what would that, that be? Yeah. And then, and then from there, uh, quantify impact. 
Awesome. Like Brian, I love that. Anything that follows the word you mentioned this. Okay. So my 90% of what I'm doing is expansion. Yeah. So I want to ask, if I could only ask questions based on what they're saying in the moment, that's what I want to do. So I can use their phrases, their references, and I can gain more clarity. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's not like per se, like, uh, like what your favorite discovery question, but it's just my, it gets the best results from me in any discovery. Hey, you mentioned that this was, uh, you're trying to improve that. What does improve yeah. mean? Like, where are you now? Where is it going to go? So anything after that is usually better than like, um, a checkbox, right. like go just jump to the next one. So what's this about? You know? One thing I love to do if you are doing a disco demo, so you run your discovery and then you go straight into demo is someone says, that's cool. What's cool about it? Yeah. That's interesting. They're Why all, is that interesting? So quick thing of tip on that. Like I, I had a BDR that every time he's so gung ho, he loved making calls. And every time you call it, he'd be like, Hey, so how's this going? They'd be like, Oh, this is awful. And then he'd be like, cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah. That's so bad. You're like, they're like, so we do a negative words. reaction and said, you go, Oh, mm. and if you, if you do that, they start to almost question their own say like, Oh, we use this and it's all right. Oh, Oh, it's all right. <laughs> that, that sounds bad. <laughs> but yeah. if you're like, cool, cool, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, you're, your parents died. Like that's oh, yeah, wonderful. Cool. Yeah. You don't I see do a lot it. Of sellers make the mistake when they um when they're doing discovery and the cu the customers talking about like their pain points, and they're yeah. like, awesome, awesome. And it's like, no, I just told you I'm losing money every yes. month with, because of this problem, and you're like, awesome, thank you, uh, great, uh, great, no, great for me, Awful. terrible Sorry. for you. <laughs> great for, when I mean say awesome, I mean awesome for this this opportunity's chance of closing. That's what I'm really referring to. We've got another question here, and I've got a little fun game we could play for this one. What does your tech stack look like? And I think I could just say each category of tech, and then when all three of us should chat what we use. Yes. Yeah. And so what we use or what our preference would be. Okay. If you want to elaborate on your question, Liana, uh, then is it? I you can feel free. Preference. Let's do preference. We're running with it. Oh, this is going to lose me some friends though. <laughs> the one we use today, because we don't upset anyone, just the one that your company currently uses. Sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Uh, CRM. Salesforce. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, sales engagement platform. Apollo. Gong. Gong. Gong engage. Gong engage. Uh, Gong engage. Uh, okay. As a rep, as a rep outreach. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, I'm, I don't have a tech stack, so yeah. I'm going to just go with what I like. <laughs> as, I'm just telling as you what a I rep used, outreach, yeah. but as a leader, I've enjoyed sales loft. Okay. All right. Okay. That's, that's a real device one as well, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Device. Cool recording software. Gong. Gong. Jiminy. I mean, Gong. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. Uh, <laughs> Where are my pearls? I need to clutch them. Uh, <laughs> Jen is in the chat. Jen Allen Knuth, my unemployed friend. <laughs> um, okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Lead generation solution. Lead contact data. 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 We and use, use butt ton. Butt ton. A butt ton. A butt ton. I've never heard of that solution. What is, <laughs> it's so is, it good. Butt, is it butt ton dot AI or butt ton dot IO? <laughs> dot IO. Oh, of course. Like butt ton dot IO. <laughs> dot XYZ. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we use Lead IQ. We use Apollo. We use Clearbit mm -hmm. and Ooh. Cognizant. We have all of it. Gong Engage integrates with all the different data providers. And can you stop pitching Gong for a second? No, Sarah? I'm just we're telling to, you. We're trying to drive value to the audience, and you, can, uh, you can't. Anything, come... Listen. Anything but Zoom Info, apparently, on that list. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> just anything. Yeah, we, we we do not use Zoom Info. It's the only one on account of the fact <laughs> Apollo, that they also no, have Apollo, an Apollo. engagement yeah. platform called Engage. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people are using more than one these days because you need to enrich it all. Because yeah, half exactly. of them are wrong. Yeah, half of it's wrong. Yeah. 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 So I don't know how it works for like. I just buy those sketchy lists. I get emailed. Um, yes, each one. Love that. Would you like a list of users of Gong? Yes, please. Yes, please. Seamless, <laughs> seamless and Zoom Info. I use I use Seamless on the side. Yeah, yeah. I've used Zoom Info. I've used it all. Yeah, all of them. You we know, we use Apollo. You're lucky if you get my 40%. favorite. I would say to use because I find like as a rep, like okay, like, whatever I use. Now, I, haven't, Lucia, I've I used haven't Lucia. Lucia's use, been I mean, great. I've, I've I haven't gotten to use Apollo ever, so I hope to change that one day. I, but... I, my <laughs> understanding is Apollo's contact data is the best. 
that's what I've heard as well. That's what I'm hearing in the grapevines. But to me, like half the time, it's all wrong anyway. So I'm more like, which one is my favorite to use as a platform? It's like and 60% I really like percent as opposed to 64%. I, I, percent I like I like the way that Lead IQ pulls stuff, pushes it directly into, into Salesforce yeah, and into the sequence. Yes. And so it's massive time saver. That's yeah, why I like it. Yeah. I don't know if all the other tools do that, but I just remember using Lead IQ. Like, other it's tools, amazing. other tools, like supposedly, kind of sort of do it, yeah. but like I could never get it to work with Zoom yeah. Info. Because you could get a list from um, LinkedIn Sales Nav and turn right it down, straight into a sequence. Has yeah. a product uh, called Lifter that yeah. automatically suggests and adds new contacts within your ICP and deals. Thought that was pretty cool. That yeah. is pretty darn cool. So I'm just checking something um, on the live stream real quick. I'm just going to do something real quick. Um, okay, so yes. while we're going through this, um, uh, Jen, what's your question? Yeah, Jen. Hey, Jen. 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 Dark social inaction. It's the darkest. The sun is setting. The fog is rolling in. Oh. I heard a foghorn just that, before this that, started. That's just uh, San Francisco. What do you yeah, think of dark social? Okay, it didn't go live on our profiles. That's not the end of the world. We're on a line to just check and see if it went live on us, but that's okay. Cool. Um, what do you think of dark social? What does that mean? What does that word make you feel? Um, a little creeped out. A little creeped out. Why? Um, because it's like the dark web. No, it, it, like, because okay, dark social is just what people did anyway. Now it's got a fun name. Now it's got a name. Fun name. Yeah, it's like product led growth is like, oh, you're doing trials. Like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> or like, like proof of concept. It's a trial. It's a trial. But it's, it's okay. A free trial for the individual user. So, you, it's but there's some people some will do it and say like, not PLG, but like a POC. Yeah. Proof of concept. We're gonna do a proof of concept. It's a trial. We're, we're, you just you might pay for it this time. You may not. Yeah. We reinvent a lot of things that already existed. Dark social is a great name for it, but it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily get me like super excited. I know it's extremely powerful. I'm just yeah. not very good at it, like you are. What do you mean good? You're What's so that mean? Good. How, how, am I, how am I good at dark social? What does that mean? That's his, that's his AMA. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, how am I? How are you good at dark no, social? I'm, I'm, I'm curious because I just never. I, I I kind of every time I hear, it, I kind of roll my eyes. Oh, I, I I honestly don't know if you're good at dark social because I don't know like what your lead attribution looks like. I don't know what your like. Hey, hey uh, we got a new question in the chat. Um, hey, Will, why is? Oh wait, it might be me. Actually, we don't know. It could be uh, me. My shirt really, is like your glowing. Shirt's so ugly. Jen Allen Knuth says, "Why is your shirt so ugly?" That's a really horrible thing to say to Sarah Brazier. <laughs> um, she, she spent hours getting ready for this, so that's hours. Nice. I changed my this shirt. Thing, this is why people think it. Jen's really nice. Comments like this about Sarah is exactly why. That's I mean. why you have the fight series. That's it. How do you ask for an intro to the boss after the first demo? Ooh, this is a good I, one. I have a good bit on this one. So, I, I basically talk about it as like frame switching the questions to make someone want to seem useful and intelligent and. It's a weird way of putting it, but ultimately it's this. When you're trying to get like that next level of buyer persona in, yep. people only introduce you to who you sound like. So if you've been doing this really great discovery on, let's say, a director level person or a manager and you're running the discovery and you're asking questions they understand they can answer, I and, but you want to get to that next level and they're not really like offering to bring you into the decision maker, the CEO, mm. What I do is I switch the frame of my questions. If you know the problems that you actually solve in the nomenclature for that next level, mm -hmm. ask two to three questions in a row about something that this person obviously will not know or may not have the answer to. Right. We have a natural instinct to want to know the information. If we truly, a couple times in a row, don't, be like, you can obviously say, hey, listen, typically it's this individual and the team has that data. Would yeah. it make sense for us to to bring them into a conversation uh, to get some of that data answered. The reason why is we're going to be able to link the these you points. You don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why yeah. is because the reason why is because you don't have signing authority. Um, I, I, I love that, and I like the way you ask the question and then get and give a reason why. When you say because, people are much more likely to answer it. Um, I found a lot of success in actually having those names ready. So, like, yeah. you know, uh, well, typically in the upfront contract, I won't say. I, I think I think that's uh, copyright. So I want to in your agenda at the beginning of your call, you can say typically next steps might look like this. You don't have to bring a couple of people in, have a look at the solution a little bit deeper, or have a chat about the service, or where we might go from here. Right. And then at the end of the call, you can go, you know, once you've established fit, once you've done some discovery, ask some great questions, and figure out that they might need this thing. You can go, all right. Well, typically, when when I'm working with folks, you know, 
these are the people who want to get involved. These are the people who want to have something to say about yeah. it. Ahead of the time, ahead of the call, I took the liberty of jumping on LinkedIn. It looks like this person, this person, this person. I actually give them the names. Would it be worth inviting one or all those people to the next call? Yeah. One of the things that they taught us at Gong is in your agenda. Yeah. So you say the objective of this call is to blah, whatever the objective of the call yeah. is. The outcome of the call could go one of three ways. One, we realize it's not a fit, in which case, would you feel comfortable telling me no? I'll steal some of your awards, it's all right. Steal it, steal it. <laughs> you can just drink, you can just take the cup. I'll, <clears throat> well, I'll, yeah, I'll want... be thirsty yeah. and it'll be fine. I, I would sacrifice He's my- <laughs> She's parched. My, yeah, dying. Okay. Um, one, one way the call could go is we'll say it's not a good fit, <clears throat> in which case, would you feel comfortable telling me no? Mm -hmm. Great. Yep. Um, I remember you doing that to our, our team when you saw, saw us gone. Yeah. The second one is you might have some interest, but you'll have some questions and some hesitations, in which case we'll book a call mm -hmm. for us to go over those hesitations. Or the third option is you are wildly excited about this, which is my hope, mm -hmm. and we should get A, B, and C person involved on the next call to figure out a path forward. Yeah. Is that fair? Great. Blah, no, blah, 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 blah. It's not. I refuse. It's not fair at all. It's not How fair. Dare you? And then at the last 15 minutes, you go, hey, so at the beginning of the call, um, you know, we said there was these three options. Where are we falling? What bucket are you falling into? One, two, or three. And then what I do before that is I usually say, so on a scale of one to 10, I know it's stupid, but I'm like, scale one to 10, one be 10 being, man, we should have bought the software last year. And one being, wow, what a waste of time. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> So where am I falling? Yeah. yeah. And then they say, you know, whatever. And they say a seven. Okay, Will, why am I a seven? And then I get all my objections out. Okay, great. Now I know I can handle those. <laughs> great. And then we talked about these three buckets. What, based on that, you said you're seven. So what bucket are you falling into? Or do you still have some questions and we should book some more time? Or yeah. do you think you're ready to pull in Carol and Brianne? I love that. I like I, it. I, I, I love that for you. We're especially. getting lit up in these questions. Oh, being lit up now. oh my gosh, we're behind so, now. Okay. <laughs> Um, Ryan, uh, stop biting your nails. Some, I can more, scroll up. I'll, I'll scroll up, but now yeah. we're gonna, I'm gonna get some down shit as I lean in here. I'll so, just scroll up to make sure we didn't miss any good ones. All right. We did. We got Jen. Jen reestablished a great question. Uh, Daniel Ryan, I have the worst tattoo. Oh, oh I'm not sure about that. Not one. true. No, okay, actually, no, not true. Uh, I'm we can't talk about Will it. We can't that. talk about it on live um, TV. Who has the worst tattoos? So let's let's show them off. Have you got any tattoos? No. You, no. You know, okay. Yeah, Sorry. So. Um, we'll show Ryan. Show off your worst tattoo, and I'll show you mine. Okay. Uh, my worst tattoo is uh, covered. All right. Oh, cool. okay. I uh, show you mine. This, this is the mine. scratch pad, tramp stamp. I got. Uh, What's that say? It says strong and kanji, but I thought it said strength, so that's funny. <laughs> okay. Let's strong, just um, remember strong. these questions. We'll go down. <laughs> um, Jen Allen, we got that one there. We'll put that up, and then we'll go through them. I'm gonna sit back Beautiful. down because that, I made things worse. In all seriousness, what's the best thing you unlearned as a rep that helped you become more successful? Ooh, good question, Jen. <sighs> boo, boo, boo. It's a shame it was asked by Jen. Nobody cares about your product. That's the best thing I unlearned. I used to be told you have to love the that product. Everybody, you got to be able to sell to everybody, and I unlearning that made me actually be able to sell better to more people, but the right ones. Mm. Mm. What do you think, Sarah? You can have a minute to think. I might have one. Yeah, I think there's there's a couple things I learned. I think there's a lot of best practices when misapplied, ruin your chances of ever closing a deal. Like you want to get multi-threaded with C-level leadership. So uh, the person that you're talking to doesn't want to take you there. So instead you just send that C-level leader an email about all the priorities you think you know about them. About then they that. forward it to your buyer. Yep. It was not, they're not your champion. If they're well, your champion, they're not, they would have taken you to the same. They forward it to your buyer. You make them look and bad. then they look bad because they weren't ready because you hadn't built trust. And so I've, I've been in situations where I've either heard managers recommend that to a rep because it's a relatively new manager or it's just it's like in a total misapplication. And there's a way to do that and make it work. Mm -hmm. If you're running a trial proof of concept, business assessment, whatever, yeah. you can send a no ask email. If you you can also ask your your buyer, like, hey, would it make sense? Like, hey, you're trying to sell this internally and build groundswell. Would it make sense for me to just kind of like do my thing? You can do that a lot with sales, like with sales leaders who mm -hmm. aren't quite ready to be like 
I'm, I feel confident being the champion. So they want you to keep multi-threading. Yeah. Uh, so I, I sometimes ask that I'm like, yeah, how can we partner together? So those best practices, those are the things uh, unlearning to do them the wrong way. Unlearning to do them the wrong way. Like I think, I think that's a big one. And then, um, probably probably just like sitting on sitting on questions that you want to ask but you're afraid you're going to be insulting yeah it's like those are the good ones yeah you can just say like hey are you, so you're gonna buy this or what you can say it nicer than that yeah. but there comes a point where you just need to ask for the sale yeah and i think i was I pretty sad when i know they're gonna say no cause, yeah because well, then you've got you know it's there <laughs> and closing like, is getting ahead of the buyer ladies and gentlemen <laughs> uh, uh yeah i'd say oh, the, yeah. the thing that i unlearned that probably did me the best good in sales was like i think i don't know whether it was because i thought i had to or, or whatever but i was always trying to make everyone a fit and when i started learning that some people aren't aren't, aren't ever going to buy the product because they're not interested because there's no impact or my product maybe isn't the best fit so basically instead of trying to be a fit and trying to get as many people in the pipe as possible i started trying to disqualify them you can uh, and so good. We can stand yeah. up. You're, you're the next to go up I'm there. The anyway. next, so um, the we screen, can just try and remember right? them. We can always pin them as well uh, as we get these comments. So, so um, basically, uh, disqualifying people who I previously would have tried to sell to, just because I thought if I'm talking to a customer, I'm winning. Mm. But the reality is, they were never going to buy, uh, or our product, or they were going to buy something else because our product wasn't solving the problem they had. Yeah. Or they didn't have yeah. a problem, and I was still going ahead and doing a demo and wasting my time with them. So when I actually started to say, "Hey, it doesn't really seem like this. <laughs> this is even like it, it seems like you'd be just fine without this." And they go, yeah, probably. And like, obviously, you've got to do some work before that. So do some discovery. If, you, if I'm not finding any meat on the bone, I'm going to say like, hey, it just doesn't. It seems like you don't really need this. And I previously wouldn't have had the confidence to do that. Sometimes people jump in and go, actually, no, we do. I feel so because of this, this, and this, and that is then getting us closer. Yeah. But yeah, that's probably one of those best practices that could be applied wrongly as well if you did it the wrong way. Yeah, I think pretty much everything that could be a best practice could also be a worst practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you just if you just read stuff on LinkedIn and then just go and like try it, I, I feel like I don't know. You gotta think about it. I quite the game. Listen, well. listen. Know? Cold FaceTime was a thing on LinkedIn for like a month and a half. People were like, "Did you do it?" You cold I did it, but guess who I did it to? The person who said it was cool. Oh, what'd they say? Brandon Bornanson. I I, fa I called FaceTime him and he was like legend. He just texted me back. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Okay, was all great. right. Yeah. Well, I think Jed Jed Marley was the first one to post about that. Uh, was he? Yeah, because like yeah. Okay. Where does he go get it? Yeah, let's, let's go, go, let's go, go drive. He's, he's here as well, but Jed, Jed. he wasn't. We we didn't really want. He's kind of his vibes off. So you know. Yeah. Um, we got a question from Maria. Who was the best singing voice between the three of you? I would say Sarah, Sarah, then Ryan, and then definitely myself in that order. Uh, Sarah's got singing training. We're about to put our video uh, with Sarah singing. If animals, so could, if animals could be salespeople, which animal would be the best seller? That's a good question, Dan. Oh, elephants because they got the biggest ears to listen with. Um, oh, that's that's, that's good. I like that. Yeah, that's our answer. <laughs> that's <laughs> the answer. It's definitely not a dog. They're and, like and two people pleasing. Because they got those long tongues that go and you know multi-thread the deal. I don't know. It would probably be like an octopus. You're juggling so much. You have to be problem solving. Okay. okay so these LinkedIn, you, so our, that so means we, our, our profiles are now linked. That means because that's coming through from one of ours. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. What's well, no, your most common objection you've handled? Will, how tall are you? I'm six foot three and a half. Uh, I would, I say six, three and a half because I was stood next to Jack Ryan. He's like, I'm six, three and you're like a bit taller than me. So. Ah. That's the big, that's the most common objection you've handled. No, no, I'm height? gonna read the one below because I know it'd be quick to answer. What's the most common objection you hear and handle? Um, are we talking cold calls or are we talking timing? Time is off. Okay. Is like yeah, how do you handle it? Looking right now. Uh, how do I handle it? It ultimately depends. Give me give me like three ways to handle timing. We need tactical call. tips for the people. Tactical tips for the people. <laughs> I mean, it's a hard one. I don't like to force ring, people ring. on timing. Hello. Yeah, this is an awful time. No, oh, timing of the me. call. Hello, uh, Sarah. <clears throat> oh, hey. Um, I'm actually walking into a meeting right now. I don't know if I have the time for a cold call. Is that what you're referring <laughs> to? Or are you like the timing's off? Hey, no, this probably isn't the best time to do this. <laughs> which which objection are we referring to? What's going on? Why I like the time of the call. The time of the call. Well, then why'd you answer it, Sarah? <laughs> if the meeting was so important, no. Because uh, I no, thought it was that. my children's babysitter. 
I've gotten uh, I've gotten double dialed after telling a, a a salesperson that I had to get my child to the urgent care immediately. Yeah. And I and this was 20 minutes before the meeting. He just started calling me over and over and over again. I scream. I like screamed out. I'm like, hey, listen, man, I do this for a living too, but like I told you that I'm bringing my child, so don't do that. Uh, do that. I'm not going to give you any any tip on this because I'm terrible. How would you handle? <sighs> how, how do you handle He's timing? as well. Uh, it, it depends. It depends on where it is in the sales cycle, yeah. right? So, uh, cold call. Someone's walking into a meeting. That one's simple. Great. Well, you're walking into a meeting. Do you mind if I tell you the reason why I'm calling, and then you tell me if it makes sense to call you back? Simple. <clears throat> uh, timing. So that's prospecting. Timing. Like, uh, hey, this this someone responds also to like an email. Hey, I don't know if the timing's right for this. Hey, no worries. How about we just chat if there's a little bit of interest. I can tell you what we do. You can tell me about some of your challenges and then we can figure out the when to if this is a good fit. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Sarah's just killing it. Yeah, this is this rattling this up. I'm not, I'm not even going to even ask this question now. Um, and then like we get we get into the we get into the funnel. So we're somewhere we've had some discovery. Hey, actually timing's no longer right. Great. Talk to me about that. Like in our discovery, you told me ABC things are priority. Like, how are you thinking about handling them then? Is, has something else come up or are you going to attack this a different way? And then just try to figure out if like there's an opportunity to actually solve the yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, and then like end of end of sales cycle. I mean, that's kind of like. You've, you've done something wrong at that point. Well, yeah. in, I'd argue that most objections happen because we missed something at the front. You know, yeah. I think a lot of cold call objections could be avoided if you. You know, often when Set I get the brush offs, correctly. yeah, if you get the brush offs, it's often a symptom that what you said up front wasn't relevant or interesting or the way you said it what didn't get their attention. Yeah. Um, that, that's that's okay. a bit so of a bit of a like, a, I don't love that because it's not that tactical, but like I've found the more confident, the more at, at peace I sound when I'm making a call, the less likely I am to be brushed off by someone. Or if you can try and get that reason out, like you said, hey, totally understand you're in a meeting, I've called you in the middle of the day or like we already have something uh, like I'm sure you have something in place if you didn't. And you, you know, you'd probably already have called me. Um, do you mind if I tell you why I'm calling and, and why other people still chat to us? You know, like what you said. Yeah. I think you can avoid those by just doing a bit more. I don't think it's really like usually it's like my PBO avoids that from ever coming up. Yeah. yeah I'm just like, hey, listen, I know I'm calling you out of the blue, but I saw something on your site regarding this. Mm -hmm. Mind if I share why I'm calling? Yeah. And if they're like, hey, no, I really got to go. Am I going to get the 30 seconds to say it? I always say, like, if, if they're not going to let you have the time to say it, you're not getting that meeting from the call anyway. And that's you, okay. It is. Uh, not every one. point of contact needs to be a book meeting, but it, it's kind of like, don't don't fight it and piss yeah. them off in that moment. I see Sam's <clears throat> comment, I think, is an easy, easy okay. one. If you could spend one day with any sales expert in the world, who would it be? Sarah Brazier? No. <laughs> well, I just did. Thank you. Yeah. You were the best day ever. Um, we're best friends now. Absolutely. Best friends anyone ever had. Ryan? Uh, it would be Alex Ramosi, so I could talk to him about how B2B selling uh, goes. Let's mess with you. But uh, <laughs> it would be. I would like to learn a lot Dude, from him. Give him some him, tips on his curls, because he's he's, he's, I'm he's, bigger than him. You know? Yeah, all oh, my, <laughs> my muscles. No, I'm just He's uh, he's great on B2B, B2C sales. I think a lot of his tips are highly relevant. But I'd love, uh, especially to get an, a, a peek into the port codes that he's that he's uh, in his fund, and how he's applying B to C standards to B to B. Because I think there could be a massive shift to actually yeah. have his businesses run smoother if there were B to B real tactics in there. Oh, I don't know who I'd hang out with. I guess you. <laughs> Ryan, you can go now. It's going to be me and Sarah now. We're, we're having a, we're having a thing of it. No, um, I would probably say Jen. Alan Canoe, because I just have such a good time being mean to her. So yeah, I'd spend the day with Jen and just rip into her the full day. So um, that's the time. That's my idea of a good time. <laughs> What's that one under there? Uh, I can't even see it. I've what taken... have you done to improve your tonality on sales calls? This is why I'm wearing my glasses so I can so, yeah. read these things. <laughs> is being in? Oh, oh. Wait, is that uh, we're we're all the way wait, to the bottom? Wait, wait, yeah. What, what have do you that done to, do to help and then we'll do Jen your and then tonality? We'll, and then being we'll... an SDR for the most part a numbers game. Yes and no. Great white, no one would say no. Yeah, like that it, it depends. So, yes, you could b build anything into uh, know your numbers, BDR math, but I don't believe that it's just a numbers game because a lot of the issue right now is that the numbers are getting astronomically large for such a low return that I think that it's actually becoming more of a quality game and then you mix it back with the numbers game. Mm -hmm. How 
can you take the absolute best shots every single time you're doing it in the highest quality and then you figure out what's the maximum amount of times you can actually do that effectively that's the bdr math now so i don't think it's entirely a number okay i think um, <laughs> the, the, the numbers often help you get good as long as you're doing the work so like if you're making cold calls and doing them and doing enough of them you're going to get better at them right so qu quant quality quantity can lead to more quality the exception for that is automation because if you're just like blasting out like a thousand emails you're not getting any better but if you're if you're doing the work naturally it gives you some repetitions allows you to get good so I, i'm not against the whole idea of like do more because i think doing more often helps you get better and then you can do less yeah uh, what, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay all right I think it depends on the market that you're selling to. It depends the product that you sell. There's like a lot of things that go into, is this a numbers game or not? Yeah. What your, you know, how your demand gen works. Do you have product led growth? Do you not? So there's like a bunch of factors, but like ultimately you need to know your numbers. You need to know how many cold calls you need to make yeah. in order to get a connect. And you need to know yeah. when you do get a connect, how often does that actually translate? If you have higher quality contacts that you know are more likely to buy because they've shown intent signals or buying signals, then you'll be great. Versus if you're just calling down a list. This is a, a little bit of a dirty secret on that. When I was really killing it the most secret, as right? a BDR, yeah. it was wild, wild west. I just did, I just tried to snipe. I mean, the, the gong video that I put, I just wanted to get the best quality meeting and I figured out whatever I needed to do it. And I was so disorganized, but I was doing a great result. Is that a long-term BDR success trait? I don't think so. No. And do I ever recommend that to reps that I, I I'm training or I, or that are employed by me? No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was more of a by nooker by crook kind of yeah. BDR at the time. Is wicker furniture over or underrated? I love a little, a little bit of a little rattan. Yeah. That's a really good question. Sam. I think it's overrated. That's the best Sam. question so far. Can we give Sam a prize of some kind? Sam, Sam, yeah, Sam needs Sam. a prize. Sam gets Sam a, Sam needs Sam a, gets a prize. Has anyone got one of the house aligned hats? Sam gets a, a free um, aligned account. That's it. I was teasing. <laughs> as, as Sam, he, so Sam you works win a free for aligned Alex account. Ramosi, by the way. You're welcome. I was teasing him about that. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you, you win a free free um, a license of uh, aligned. It's free, by the way. Anyway, free. It's free to sign up for. Make sure to check it out. They've been on an amazing event here. Rich has got a question here. What have you done to help improve? Oh, we're going to... The we'll, tonality. Do we'll do gens well, afterwards, but okay, yeah. Uh, but the tonality of your call, we did that, didn't we? No, we just we just read it, but we right. didn't talk okay. about okay. it. What have you done to improve your tonality on sales calls? Stood up. Yeah. Got yeah. myself pumped up in with um, like music before a call session, mm. and uh, I feel like sometimes on sales calls it depends on what kind of cold caller you are, but you either turn your personality five percent up or down depending on what it's like. Uh, Ronan Passard is really well turning his 5% down. Hmm. It's very calm. It's very relaxed. Yeah. I know a lot of BDRs that have done very well turning it just a slightly a bit up and using more inflections in their yeah. tonality. Like that? Like that? Like that? Little up speak? Little up talk? No. Little up talk? Little up talk? Is that a question? Little up talk? I hate that. I hate that sound. Yeah. I hate that. You do that to me on a cold call, done. Done. You so, actually, uh, no, I mean, I really hate, I really hate up talk. Sarah, do you have uh, any any time today? Well, that's, God, that's God, a good question. No, no. We're gonna do that for the rest of the afternoon now. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna up talk you the whole time. What was it like being homeschooled? I think you'll just sound Australian. <laughs> What's <it> like being... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I already sound Australian. Um, um, I think slow down is a good one as well. Slow down. Just imagine yeah. you're talking to a friend or that you just, you know, maybe. Don't say cool to bad things. Smile and stand Smile. akimbo. What's akimbo? Oh, stand up, put your hands holding, on your hips. Yeah. Holding yeah, two, I know that from COD. Akimbo means akimbo. two, holding two, but I, I just know from COD. <laughs> when you stand, this, this <laughs> standing like vectors. Peter Pan, I gotta crow. <laughs> That's standing akimbo. Hips akimbo? Then, then? Yeah. I lost my shadow. You just told everyone that you were taller than me. Oh my God, no, my God. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. God, we had them tricked. <laughs> Damn it, I'm sorry. Do uh -huh. you believe in smiling while dialing? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. I do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I People, you can hear a smile. You can yeah. hear a smile. You can, you you can, can hear, hear depression. Right you can hear depression. Yeah. Right and you can, and you, can you can hear utter you can, you can hear pure desperation. Desperation. Yeah, and... smelly. Yeah. It's not nice. So uh, smile. Yeah. I I once had a, a BDR when I when I answered the phone said, oh, my God, you picked up. 
and I just started laughing. Uh, and it, the, the call went well for them. Yeah. I just, it was actually the funniest thing. Like, I was so not expecting it. I was like, oh, it's <laughs> that's the new a cold opener call. that everyone should try out. Oh my God, you actually picked up. That's kind of funny in a way. You know, like, most people would be like, oh, <laughs> and like, I don't know. That would Risky. Make, that would work for Test people it. that make that that yeah, sell the, the sales sell. leaders. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah, yeah. very like maybe not a uh, a CISO, a, a CFO, a CISO. A C <laughs> oh my god, I am hanging up now. <laughs> I'm gonna go write a LinkedIn post about this, and I'm gonna tag you. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, and then Ross Palmer is gonna Ross cancel Pro, me. Plus a few others. I'm gonna backtrack. Space, then, yeah, I'm gonna backtrack. I'm gonna delete it, and then my LinkedIn account's gonna go dark, and my HR company might actually end up. And that's been the past couple of years. No, that's been everything on LinkedIn for a few years. It's always yeah. once a month the sales community who never agree on anything come together to fight someone who's tried to cancel some SDR for a cold email they sent. Yeah. You know, they come to, we can all agree that is a bad thing. Yeah. That's the one thing the sales community can all say, that sucks. That sucks. Yeah. Have you ever bought, um, Jen asked a question uh, about, have you ever bought anything or taken a booked a meeting from a cold call or cold email? If so, what did it do right? A lot of us here aren't really decision makers, but I, I, what do you think, Sarah? Wait, hold on, back it up. Have I, I ever what it? Jen asked a question, have you ever booked a meeting from a cold call or an email that someone has sent or made to you? Like, and I took a meeting and then helped them sell internally. Is that the question or uh, anything really? I think, I think it's just like, it, have you ever booked a meeting off some Google? Yeah, Dude, yeah. I, I mean, emailed her and got a meeting about trying to get into Gong at some point too. Yeah. And yeah. If people message me and I can yeah. be helpful, then I'll try to be helpful. I suppose you got your name as a weight in there as well. I'd imagine. Mm. Not as much as you'd hope. Not as much no. as you'd hope. Not as much as I hoped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but okay. Not as much. They don't, they're like, they're a everyone company. right now. Go big company. And message, it's like um, a thousand people. <laughs> Everybody, if you need, I mean, if you want to sell the gong, just I, immediately I message Sarah. Name. Guy with the glasses. Amit. Talking about Amit? Yeah, Amit. Amit. Yeah. Amit. Message Amit right oh, now and say Sarah Brazier today. said that um, gong would be a really good fit for your product. So there you go. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I have done, what, what a really good one is... Gong's SDR team, especially like when we were first starting out, we were hitting up all these people and we had really great outreach and people would say, oh, you should come work for me. I'm sure every salesperson has prospect it's who's prospected into sales. They offer you a job. And Adam Ochart would always say, you know, I'd never work somewhere that doesn't have Gong. And I have taken that and I have used that and I have sold a lot of people Gong. I wouldn't work anywhere that doesn't like use Gong. That. Yeah, I, I really least, wouldn't. I worked a couple of places at the very least but it, it's been a little bit sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not, it's not just, as effective. It's, it's hard. Not as effective. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. I gotta hear a, what like, that's a little snippet. I gotta hear what you're saying um, to know if you're if we're doing well. What what needs to be improved? Yeah, and also like uh, you know the biggest thing I think, and we're just plugging Gong a lot. Yeah, this um, is this is. This, we're at a line house. house of, this is the house of Ooh, Gong now. Gong. Not the house of the line. I'm sorry, Aligned. It's, it's uh, Sarah's fault. It's can not we, my fault. Can we plug? You guys are bringing product, it up. Product teams and what they could use out of that information would be yeah. is huge. I think there's not enough product marketing teams that actually listen to the voice of the customer. There's not enough marketing teams that listen to the voice of the customer instead of coming up with buzzwords mm. like synergies and oh my gosh, innovative <laughs> digital <laughs> transformation. Okay, let's, let's, I want to, Liana. Liana. What Sorry. is the number I, the way, one piece of advice <laughs> you would give someone who wants to get into sales? Rethink your Life decisions. <laughs> uh, my number one piece of advice for someone who's going to get into sales, I think, like, just, if they'd never worked in sales before, I think you really need to understand, like, what good selling looks like. Yes. But um, I, I often used, I used to make TikToks about tech sales and how well it pays. But then I kind of like felt like I was like selling a dream. Um, yeah, they, I mean, great. I love sales. I, 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 I would never be here where I am today uh, in any other career, I don't think, if I hadn't done end up in sales. I love it for a fact. It's not for everyone. But um, I think my one piece of advice would be like, if you know you want to get into sales, then, um, then, then start treating any job searching you do as more of a sales process as well. Mm -hmm. I'm talking like go outbound. And I, I know some hiring managers and HR folks don't love this. But I like, if I'm going to start hitting up leaders who I want to work for. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to prospect them. And then when I'm in this interview process with them, I'm going to ask them questions. And Outbounding try and hiring discovery. managers isn't dead. You're just not good at it. Whoever you're posting. <laughs> what, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what I, what I think, uh, the big takeaway, like if someone asked me that question, I would say, 
go find a company that is known for having good sales training and is known for having a solid yes. sales process. And so you'll need to do a little bit of research because you're not going to be able to go hit up a bunch of sales leaders that you want to work for because you don't know them. You don't know who you want to work for. You're just trying to get into sales. Yeah. Yeah. So so go go figure out like where can you learn um, the the skills and and who has a good reputation. My first sales job. Yes. Uh, the company did not. What was your sales? Uh, I, 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 I hit the story now. Yeah. So my first sales job, I, I worked as an SDR at a company that I don't even want to name. Yeah. Okay. Everybody go on LinkedIn and check it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's even there anyway. I, 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 took, I took it off my LinkedIn because I it just they it, it wasn't worth putting there. And I spent nine months not hitting quota. And part of that I can say is on me because I I didn't I didn't um, have the right mindset, but the mindset continued to deteriorate because I would come in to one on ones with my manager and be saying things like, What am I doing wrong? I just talked to someone for 30 minutes on a cold call and I didn't book the meeting. What am I doing wrong? I am booking these meetings, but they're not flipping. I don't understand what's happening. And I literally had like a 15 minute cold call that I brought into a session with my manager. And he said, well, what part am I supposed to listen to? And I said, I don't know because I don't know where it went wrong. And he said, well, I don't have time for this. It's too Ooh. long. And he shut his laptop and he walked out the door. So I was like, you don't want to work at a company like that where people aren't going to invest in you. Go and, to go to a place that believes in enablement. Yeah, go to right. a place that believes in enablement. Ask them like, what's their ICP? How did they identify it? How many people are hitting quota? What's your attrition look like? Yeah, um, those are super important questions. Like a, a really to good ask. question, in fact, but, is like, hey, can you tell me about a, a, a new rep who's not had sales experience before that you brought on and how you got them to be successful? Yes, that'd be a, like a very telling question because I totally agree. I I spent five years thrashing around doing all the mistakes in the book in sales because I was never taught by the leaders. And then when I finally worked at a company that gave me good training, it all clicked. I was like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be pitching my product all the time. I should be asking questions. And it all started making sense But because no one had ever shown me that before. And although I'd started reading a few books, it, it, it doesn't make sense unless someone helps you see it. In you, way, yeah, you, you, have to, you, have to see, you have to see the path laid out for you. There's lots of lots of theories out there. We're being quite theoretical. My first sales training was seven years into my sales career, six years into my sales career, and it was Keenan. And then I went to go work for him the next like thing. And that was like a master class. But the reality is that I just, I thought I hated sales because I did not know what good selling could be. Yeah. Um, if I were to do it all over again and be like, you know, in my early twenties, I would probably pick a larger company that's going to train me. That's going to invest in me that there's already predictable success, but it is going to be a grind that we build the resilience. But I did the opposite. I went to startups where they didn't have product market fit. And I yeah. and I didn't know if I was bad or the product was bad or my bosses were bad. And or if like, they're just targeting the someone who has no authority to buy. That was my problem. Yes. They were like, yeah, you should be hitting up this person, this person, this person. I now know that that company does not target any of the people they were telling us to. You're trying to close to the book. social media manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah basically <laughs> the social media manager when really it's the CFO who should buy. Yeah. Like, oh. I love that. Got it. But your points are way better than mine. So um, find a company that's actually going to train you. And I, I would say that probably start, you're right, startups, those environments, you often don't have that leadership yet. Not to print with a bit broad brush, but I'd say normally like at least 100 employees, you got to be thinking like. I also, and, like I didn't have a degree. Yeah. So I wasn't getting hired by Oracle or yeah. NetSuite. Yeah, or well, yeah, those, yeah. You know, like I wasn't, I wasn't going to get hired by just Salesforce. Lie resume, mate. Lie, just I, lie. <laughs> I lied on mine. I went that. to, you went to Harvard <laughs> and Princeton in I've three got, years. <laughs> Yep, that's right. University of Brighton. The Americans don't know what University of Brighton is. I can tell them it's the Harvard of the UK. It's actually number 81 it's the in the Harvard rankings. of the UK. And it's quite and a there's like 120. It's 120 years. So it's in the bottom bottom half. It's great. And I got a degree in events management as well. So that really Now, great. I've yeah. hired people with Harvard degrees and that's really funny. Oh yeah. That's 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 full circle. I'm like, "Oh my, you goodness, you're much smarter than I." But uh <laughs> but you're going to be on the phones just like me. <laughs> that's right. No um, what is the best unexpected value project that a hopeful hire has ever given? What does that mean? Sam, can you retype that question and, and I'll get back to you because I don't understand the ask. I love the clarifying. Value project. Um, what are all the different types of outbound? Channels? Uh, yeah, I guess I would say probably channels and then you've got inbound, outbound, and then the different channels. Yeah. Um, but it's just outbound. So what, just phone, outbound. email, video, carrier pigeon. If you're creative, mm -hmm. <laughs> direct, direct mail, gifting. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a whole there's a whole heap. Which ones? 
the all the types of the outbound video. is how can you get in front of someone and have a and start a conversation and and just Social. write a list so face to face you can knock on doors if it's not creepy like if you're in new york you can Should go around. do that tomorrow we'll do some door to door yeah, yeah door to door door to door call call the software yeah we'll hike up hey the i know we're knocking out of the blue but do you mind <laughs> if i have five seconds to share? by the way i did that i sold glass bottled milk door to door I did a ABT. And I, was it and so I, tasty? Was I, it great milk? It was like, it was, it was great. <laughs> you know, like, That's when I found out I was dairy intolerant, like, by the way, too. <laughs> if someone can find it was rough because I was bringing like, home tons of milk and I was like, I'm dying on the inside. <laughs> I think that, that's actually kind of cooler because if someone came to my house at like six o'clock on a um, Tuesday afternoon, a Tuesday night, I'm just like, I'm having a horrible time with the kids, they're killing me, you know, and they knocked to my door and they were holding a stack of pizza and said, would you like to buy a pizza for 20 bucks? I would probably buy the pizza. If I hadn't started dinner yet, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's actually a play there for actually going door to door and selling people food. Most people come to my door are like pest control, the line, uh, security companies. The line was basically I would knock on the door, I'd make sure to have to pull up the car. So the sticker, the magnet on my car would say, you know, Green Dairy Farms or whatever like that. And um, yeah. the guy was a con man. That was the real funny. He never delivered any of the milk and it, it was really bad. Uh, but I knocked on all these doors and I would say, I would take a step back and I said, uh, Hey, I, uh, I'm the milkman, and they would be confused, and then I would be able to go into my pit. Do you mind if I ask you a quick question? The milk. Do you, do you uh, how often do you buy milk or dairy? Did you and wear the milkman outfit, which is like the striped? No, I was like just in shirt. regular. I was regular clothes. Okay. Uh, the 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 company, unfortunately, it was the real company behind it, which is the real farm, is Batten Kill Creamery in Salem, New York. Great stuff. Right. But the guy that was running it was running like a side distribution and then one day just delivered a bunch of bad product and mm. disappeared. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So good, bad, early yeah. stage startups. Yeah, I, guess. That's what I, mean. <laughs> I mean, some of those mistakes help us get to where we are today. I mean, as I said, like, I wish I had learned how to sell good or been taught how to sell sooner, but I also don't regret it. Because all the mistakes that you make in life are going to give you that perspective of like, well, you, okay, now it's good. Your nose is so much better for sniffing out a shady company. Mm. exactly you need to know you yeah. need to have that so like my dad always says you so need if to I shovel give you rats one thing that life, was my moment when i was rats, shoveling yeah. some rats i yeah. was like i don't think that this is for, for me, me. <laughs> yeah that's it that's the that's the line of the, the, the my dad always said he was like gotta... oh, i gotta give you one thing would be my mistakes and i always love that yeah but you can't because i have to go and make them myself and then i'll learn how not to be an idiot yeah and yeah. the same thing as sales. So anyway. Sam, he clarified his question. Okay. Has anyone ever tried to give you something of value to stand out when trying to get a foot in the door at your company mm. instead of just asking for a job? Prospect prospect list, for example. Prospect list, email templates, sent a gift basket. Unfortunately, gifting is like a big thing. So people have done a lot of that, but I don't think it's really trying. Oh, no, not in the job search. I guess. Not, not in a job search. I know, I, don't, I know I've done it. Like I've helped teams close deals and then like message the CEO. I've written an ebook and given it to a CEO about their business, referencing their business with all these different diagrams and, and my thoughts on how I could do something. And I gave it to them. And uh, how'd it go? Did you get the job? I did not get the job. Um, I, Cause I don't think that people care about what they liked me quite. A, they were, they were, they were quite fond of that move. That was a good move. But it, uh, like it, 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 honestly, it, it depends. I think that creating, like creating an email list is great. I've had some reps like write a cold call email and show me what they would, they showed me like three emails they would write, but I've done more of this and I've seen it done and I would like to see it done. Yeah, I like to it be well. honest. Like I had a, a, you know, I haven't actually ever hired a salesperson, which is why none of my content is about that because I don't believe in talking about things I haven't done. Besides the point, check me if I ever go back on that, by the way. Um, but the uh, I had a video I had to hire re recently. And during the video process, the interview process, they had like three videos for me that I could actually use and go ahead and post them on the uh, on LinkedIn, on uh -huh. YouTube. And I was like, you're like already doing the job. So I feel like anything you can do that proves that you're you're capable of doing the job. Are you like being assaulted by a hummingbird? Yeah, I just heard, yeah I heard that, that hummingbird came from me. Did that really come to you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about gifting in, in sales, though, in general? Gifting and sales, I think, can work. There's, It's definitely worked for some of our SDRs. I, I don't do it very often. It's sort of like a last-ditch effort for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I Think of like Stu Heineke instead of like uh, Sendoso, though. I, I, like, I, I don't want... I've been sent bottles of tequila with my name on it, but... 
I don't, I don't believe in buying meetings. I, yeah. uh, I, I, I firmly believe that if you send me a bottle of tequila, I will introduce you to anyone in my company, but I'm not a decision maker. So, um, yeah, I, um, I, I don't have that power. Like I, I don't have, I'm, I'm so low on the totem pole that if you sent me something, I'd be like, wow, that's really nice. But I actually don't know the CFO or if I did know the CFO, like I don't know enough about you or your company. Like I'm the wrong person. A lot of times people, pro when pr people prospect me, I'm like, you didn't read my LinkedIn because I am a sales rep, a sales rep, and I am low on the totem pole. So, uh, I do believe, however, there is probably a, a place in in sales. I think for very thoughtful gifts make yes. a difference. So, uh, I had a customer. One of my the biggest deal I've ever closed actually. This was before I was any good at sales as well. Um, so, but now I accidentally closed this one. But it was with um, Career Builder back when they were big. And um, I was trying to sell to this VP of marketing and everything I did ignored. They were like the biggest account I had in my territory. So I was like, I need to close Career Builder. Um, and I saw he made a post on LinkedIn about um, his son was going to do a mission in Fiji. And so what I did was I went onto this website that of a company that based in Fiji that makes like handcrafted gifts. And I had a, a frame made for him with his son's name because he mentioned it. And then I just sent him a note saying, hey, this is uh, you can put a photo of someone's on your desk. Yeah. He, he like emailed me right away. He obviously had seen all my emails and searched for it and uh, came back and then we ended up doing business together. So yeah, awesome. something like that's great. If but you... like, I wouldn't be doing that. For, if I only, maybe if I had a hundred accounts on my, on, on my, in my total ICP, but for most people, that's just too time consuming too much. So maybe it's 80. You, it's, you know? it's, it's your tier ones. You yeah. know, you, you pick 15 accounts that if, if you close that, it would make your quarter. Yes. Yeah. And you take those 15 accounts and you find out who the people are and you do some research and that's who you gift. And then once you exhaust those 15 accounts, you add 15 more. Yeah. And By the way, the reason I chose gone to do the public music video for yeah. is because all of your people that follow you are also my demographic. So I thought it was like a one to many. So it was worth yeah. doing that to gone. And there's also to gravy yep. because they were so well known within yeah. other sales leaders that I thought, okay, if I do this right, I don't just prospect on my prospect plenty more. It's kind of the same. If you do something really creative or, or thoughtful and a, like that person posts about it on LinkedIn about, wow, hey, wow, this was really great. Kudos to this salesperson yeah. for doing that. That is also another way where you could probably get more meetings and yeah. you know, get yeah. that cosign. That's it. Um, what's the weirdest cold call you've ever had? I would, let me just check how we're doing for time here. Oh I'm, my god! I am conscious. Okay, we've got ten more minutes. Ten more minutes. Hey, keep keep questions. We could probably got time for like three or four more. It was like a, it was like a warm-ish call. So I had been prospecting an account. I don't remember what it was. It was it was when I was doing enterprise accounts as an SDR, and I'd reached out to a guy, and he emailed me back on the weekend, like call me, and he put his phone number in it, and I sent him a couple of emails. So I was like, okay, great, yeah, yeah perfect. So I called him and we, we missed each other a couple times. Finally, I got on the phone with him and I started chatting with him. And this call isn't gone. I found it later. It's probably gone now because they clean out calls every yeah. like four years. And this is five years ago at this point. Maybe it's three years. But anyway, he, so I called him and we're talking and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to introduce you to my CEO. I'm going to introduce you to my CRO. Hey, do you like to eat? Have you, where, where are you right now? Are you in San Francisco? Do you know do you know this restaurant? I'm gonna take you there. I'm gonna take you out for dinner. So it was a date. Yeah. He's it like turned into this like conversation of he was gonna introduce me to people to instead we were going to go on this date. And I was like, I'm and I just sort of. I think he's making a cold call yeah, right he's now. He's making a cold call right now. Yeah, making the weirdest cold call ever made. Yeah. Um sorry, keep going. But um basically it was the most awkward and uncomfortable thing. And on the call, I'm just like laughing and laughing and laughing because I'm so uncomfortable, but I'm so desperate to book the meeting as well <laughs> that I'm like, uh -huh, you know what? Well, right, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll see you in San Francisco. <laughs> so about that intro to your we're, CEO. We're here. He's nearby. <laughs> we can go see him. Oh, great. Perfect. <laughs> oh, sure. All right, all right. Sarah. Yeah. So uh, here's my most awkward cold call. Hello, Zavar. What? Hey, this is Ryan. What? With, uh, what? Do you mind if I share what? my... 
Yeah, it goes on for about 20 minutes of him just saying what. That no. was my weirdest cold call. And it was, oh you, you just kept going. I, I went and I'm, I'm, I'm cracking up halfway through it. And I'm just trying. Is, is, it sounds like a recording. Is, was it definitely? No, a he's real. He's he was a real. It was the U.S. Department of Agriculture. That's the funniest part of it. Uh, he did not want to speak to me. He, um, he obviously did because he said that he wanted to know what, but I wanted to know why. <laughs> and uh, and we didn't we didn't see eye to eye there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it's a minute and a half of him saying what? Okay, okay, <laughs> what? It was good. Weirdest cold call. Always, you always get those ones where you've called like someone who's dead um, or their wife. Or the, the, you know, or that, or that significant other. Yeah, the, I'd say the weirdest one was probably the worst one. It stays in my memory so much. But I called this this person, and I was using a power dialer, so I was like, I wasn't manually dialing, so I was just kind of distracted. And then the phone went off, and I like completely fumbled my opener, and I just ended up just going, "Oh, you know what? How are you?" And um, the guy was like, "I'm, I'm, I'm." Um, I'm fine. Sorry, who is this? And I was like, well, sorry, my bad. This is sales call. The reason I'm calling is this, 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 you know, kind of went into it. And then he was like, then why did you pretend that you knew me if this is a cold call? I was like, what? He was like, you asked me how, how have you been? Which is an opener that I know that I've, I've used as well. But I, yeah. so I think he was like, I, I was like, oh, I, I don't think I did say that. But then I was like getting to the point where I was arguing with him. And he's like, no, you did. You did. I remember. And he's like, why are, you, why are you calling people depending that you know them instead of leaving with something of value? And he was a, a sales leader. So he basically tore one strip of, of me and then I went down the other side, right? Now, after that call ended, I didn't just start keep calling. I, I did the worst thing possible. I went to Gong, went and checked the recording. And I was like, I did say, how are you? Not how have you been? And then I sent him the recording to try and prove him wrong. Ah! And in my opener, I did not disclose that the call was being recorded, oh. which is against uh, uh, against the law. Us in some some wants. states yeah uh, so then i sent him the recording to try and prove him wrong and then he like sent me this message and he was like i'm going to have you fired i am going to do everything in my power to have you removed from the company i'm going to sue you i'm going to sue you personally all this what i should have done be like that guy was an arsehole and called the next person but instead i let my ego get involved mm. and then i i didn't sleep for weeks because i thought this was going to kill me you know i thought i was going to get fired for was going to get like I, he never did anything he never messaged my boss he never did anything oh he did he that. did he put you in a week of terror oh he, he hurt me big time <laughs> i am um, i still sales have that, that person on linkedin as well that was before i was creating content one day when i'm angry and mad because I haven't forgotten it, I'm going to tag him and say the sales leader's a jerk. <laughs> Which, well, on my, it'll be my last ever LinkedIn post, you know, on my deathbed. Oh, he'd be probably gone by then, actually. I made a terrible. Sales. I'm holding on to my grudge. That's probably not good either. But I, I, yeah, I've let mine go. Let it go. Be like Elsa. A former let go. VP of sales at Outreach. I think former. He may still be there. I don't know. But I cold called him on a dialer system. I didn't mean to have him in there. And I had a canned pitch. It was not good. Like it was just the worst way to have done this. And I basically accused him of like. I was like, hey, you know, uh, it's likely that your sales team is not good at discovery. And like, I'll, I just like called out all these horrible things. And he's like, did you see the news? We just raised like a hundred, you know, really? He's like, you think I don't have this button down? Uh, it was just, I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I did not mean to call you. He's like, then why did you call me? Yeah. And it got so bad that he was like, listen, like he was like he, r going into me. And then he was like, listen, just like, if you're ever going to call me back, do it right next time. And I emailed uh, uh, Max or whatever. And I was like, hey, man, I totally messed up and did this year VP of sales. He got me the meeting that I needed. Wow. Uh, so he, had, he was like, oh, that's hilarious. I'll make the connection. But I feel bad for that call because I totally just, yeah. I insulted him. Yep. His ability to guide like his reps. Meanwhile, that none of the problems existed. Most of the, the prospecting I get insults me these days. It's like your social media engagement is bad. It's like it's like they're trying to do the problem prospecting, but they're like just defending me and calling my work. They're like your editing is awful. I'm like, I edit my own videos. Thank you a lot for that one. I I, I really put a lot of effort into that. So please don't do that. At, at um, least they're talking about something that you actually work on. Well, yeah, people, exactly. People no, no. people message me about my website. I don't have a website. It's Gong's <laughs> website. I don't run that. People message me about our HR department. People, it's people, just too many things. I'm like, I don't know what database I'm in. And what people think I, I do. I have a confession, Sarah. I put you in uh, a lot of lists just for fun. Because of that one time that you didn't introduce me to your CFO. So there you go. Full circle. But we have actually come up on time now. <laughs> to confirm, just quickly before we end, I think they all want to know how tall we are. So can we all stand up? And just... <laughs> Get I don't like this game anymore. Hug. I don't like this on, game give, anymore. Let's, no, let's give a hug on the end. Bye, everyone. Thanks so yeah, much for well, coming. This is, and now Will's going to stand up and be like,
yeah, that, yeah, there, there you go. All right. And that's the end. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. It was so, so great. So great. Sort of great questions. For all, and all three of you. No, I'm just <laughs> Dude, no, we had some great questions. This was awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was fun. great. Ciao.